Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today I'm going to be quiet and cool down with the latest cooler from Be Quiet. It is the Shadow Rock Slim 2. It retails at an amazing low price of 45 euros, and there are links in the description just below. And don't forget to give us a good thumbs up and a subscribe while you're down there. Okay, so we're looking at the Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim 2, which it says on the front is a premium product, so it's one of their higher end products, and it's compact cooling and it says significant quiet as well. I'm presuming it means significantly quiet, but we'll see. Um, it's basically a cooler which has got very high cooling performance and it's got silent operation in a compact design. It's got optimized mounting, the new version as compared to the old standard rock slim uh, and it's aligned with the heat sink for more airflow throughout the case. It's also got six um, millimeter heat pipes in there and a redesigned brushed aluminium top cover and it's also got a 160 watt TDP as well and it's because it's space saving design uh, it gives you a lot more room for putting your RAM in there even in tightly packed cases. As I said, it's silently optimised and it's got a 135mm Be Quiet fan, uh, up to 23.7 decibels. Okay, on this size it tells you a bit about Be Quiet. It's also got specifications of the heatsink and fan there. You'll find those in the description below as well as on the screen above. On the other side, it just gives you a QR code on there as well as some different languages. And on the back, it gives you a couple of pictures and a bit more information about the product here, but nothing too in-depth. Okay, so this is the contents of the box itself. First, you've got a disposal form or sheet what tells you how to dispose it. No one's really going to read that, to be honest, but it's there if you want to. You've got the manual here as well, which has got multiple different instructions depending on the socket of the board you are actually using, from socket 2011. And then on this side, it tells you how to do your socket 1150s, 1200s, as well as your AM, AM3, AM4, and so forth sockets. And it's generally pretty straightforward for a mounting a cooler. Next, you've got a pack of screws and a back plate that goes on the back of your motherboard which is pretty straightforward. Again, depends on, obviously, which type of uh, uh, board you're connecting it to, AMD, Intel, slightly different ways and so forth. You've also got a couple of brackets there as well, which will go on top of the mounts on the other side of the motherboard. This metal plate goes through the cooler, round about there, and then that screws into the mounting brackets what you fitted. So it's fairly straightforward. You do have some other mounting brackets here, and as you can see, it says AMD on them, so obviously that's for AMD. You've got some mm, unlabeled thermal paste, so I'm not sure if how good that would be comparing it to something like uh, Arctic's MX5 or whatever. It doesn't specifically say what type of paste it is, and it looks white. Not sure if it's cheap or decent or not, it doesn't actually say. And then we've got these little metal clips. That's to clip the fans onto the actual fan itself. So that fan goes on there, and then you put these clips over the fan. Can be a little bit fiddly. One in there, one in there. And once those are in there, it basically clips over 
the edge there. Not easy to do when you've not got it all fastened in and while you're trying to film at the same time, but gives you a rough idea. But we'll give you a close up of that a bit later on. And then there's another pair of clips as well. If you decided to, you wanted to buy an extra fan so you could have it on a push pull configuration if you wish. So you've got one fan on this side and then another fan on the other side there. These two screws are just to screw it into the mount of the metal bar into the mounting brackets, what we spoke about. And other than that, we've got the cooler itself. Okay, so this is what you've got in the box. As you can see, I've attached the fan onto the heatsink itself. It can be a little bit fiddly to actually get it all connected up together, especially if you're holding one bit, trying to clip the other bit over. It can be a bit fiddly, but if you persist, you will get it done. Um, they do say they're making it easy for you to mount. It might be easy for you to mount to the motherboard, but these fans can always be a bit fiddly to get on. But the good thing is, is it does come with some more of these brackets, so you can add another fan on the back if you wished, and then use it in a push-pull configuration. Now, as you can see, the Be Quiet fan is quite big. It's 135 millimeters. It does have like a ridged effect on the actual blades itself, which is pretty nice, and it does feel quite smooth, and it doesn't look wobbly when it's in use. On the bottom you do have a piece of plastic protecting the base. You can see the four heat pipes. It is four because the heat pipe sort of goes round and back round so it's not eight. A lot of people see four that side, four that side equals eight but they're not. They go all the way through the base. So you can see it's a, I'm guessing an aluminium base, um, could be nickel, but I'm guessing it's aluminium base and then you've got the copper heat pipes going directly through it. You can see all the way through the aluminium fins from one side to the other. Might be a bit hard to see on the camera. And you can see these little knobs on the top, probably the best way of calling it. That's the actual tops of the heat pipes as they go through, hence for each side, a total of eight. So otherwise, it's pretty straightforward to look at, not a huge amount to see. There are a few little fins on the actual block itself, which gives it a little bit more of a, a dissipation of heat there. But otherwise, you should be pretty straightforward, and it's got their branding on top. Down to testing. With all our reviews, we use the same machine for doing the testing where applicable. It's the same specification with the same updates, the same programs, the same drivers, and it's not even connected to the internet. And the full specifications of that machine are in the description just below. Also, unlike a lot of other reviews you will see on the market, we set our speeds at 50% and 100% when we're testing. So it gives you a rough idea what sort of noise levels when the machine is running under normal operational speeds and when it's running flat out. Also, when you set things at auto, obviously it means that the fan is going to be adjusting itself and speeding it up when it's doing certain tests and slowing it down and others, giving you false results. So setting things at a specific speed, evens of playing field between all the devices we have tested. Okay, so to the test results. This is the idle temperature test with the fan running at 50% speed. In basics, the machine is sat there for 30 minutes doing nothing so we can actually get an average temperature. Uh, and as you can see here, all the coolers we've tested are roughly the same sort of temperature. They're around about that 21, 22 degrees Celsius with one or two slightly above and below that. But basics, they're all pretty much the same. In this next test, we do the test again for 30 minutes, but this time we put the machine under full load. So that means all cores and threads on the CPU are running at 100% load for 30 minutes, with a fan running at 50% speed. And as you can see here, the Shadow Rock Slim 2 does get a respectable score of 64 degrees Celsius. Don't get me wrong, it's a little bit behind, for example, the Arctic Freezer 50 and the Gelled Phantom Black. But again, it's performing pretty well, considering it's only got one fan and it is a slim slim cooler in comparison. On this next test we do exactly the same again but we run the fans at 100% so you can see how it will perform when it's running flat out and here the Shadow Rock Slim 2 does actually catch up with a lot of the others on the market running only 2 degrees behind the eSports Duo uh, which is pretty good going and actually outperforms some of the others on there like the Aerocool Mirage 5 by a good bit. On this next test, we check the temperature 
when we overclock the processor to 5.1 gigahertz. Again, the fan is running at 100% uh, for 30 minutes. And the Shadow Rock Slim 2 here comes in at 75 degrees Celsius. Again, not the coolest, but it outperforms some of them out there on the uh, market. Um, that don't even pass the test because you can't overclock with them because they just get too hot. So it actually performs pretty well here. And again, it is a slim cooler with only one fan on this next test we're just checking the decibel levels when the fan speed is running at 50 percent the room is 45.6 decibels and you can see here we got 49 decibels which to be honest works out roughly near enough the best score on the board with the exception of the gel tranquilo 4 but it does perform hell of a lot better than the tranquilo 4 does so overall it's a lot better in performance now we're going to do the same test again but with the fan running flat out at 100 percent and here you can see it runs out at 58 decibels again that comes in sort of second place on the board which is actually pretty good considering again uh, it is a lot smaller one fan and it's got pretty good performance as well so there's definitely no issues with the decibel levels uh, in all honesty in most cases you'll probably struggle to hear it over the rest of the fans and noises coming out of your pc so overall, what is a not to like about this cooler? Yes, it doesn't perform as good as some of the others on the market, but again, you prefer, um, you're comparing something which is quite small and one fan against some things which are quite big and got two or even potentially three fans in them. So it's actually performing actually very well, especially considering it was able to cope with an overclocked i7 processor running at 5.1 gigahertz. Again, it performs very well it's very quiet it looks all right as well okay it's not black it's silver but again it still looks pretty good and again you're getting that usual high performance and quietness from a be quiet product so i can do nothing but highly recommend this product thank you for watching this video everyone it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end please make sure you subscribe like comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams it does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time Thank you.